Hello boys and girls, this week in topic we're going to still be learning all about the Great Fire of London. However, we're going to be learning about London before the Great Fire and London after the Great Fire. Today we're going to start by learning about the Great Plague and this was around between 1644 and 1666, just when the Great Fire happened. So today I'm going to teach you all about the plague and we're going to create a mind map of about the plague. Now the plague is a little bit similar to something we are experiencing at the moment. So you might be able to spot some similarities between the plague and COVID. Here's my PowerPoint. The Great Plague, 1644 to 1666. Our learning objective today is to be able to understand what the plague was, how it spread and what its consequences were, so what it meant for people living at the time. What was the Great Plague? Around about 350 years ago, in 1644, there was a terrible disease that spread across parts of Europe. We called this the Great Plague. There had been a plague in England for centuries. However, the worst year of the plague was 1665 when London was badly affected. Now, 1665 is the year before the Great Fire of London, and the, 1665 was the worst year of the plague, and London, being the capital city, was affected really badly. However, this plague had been going on for a long time before this. So, how did the plague spread? So remember, the plague is like a disease or an infection or a virus. Some doctors thought that the plague spread through the air, which infected people. Other people believed that farm animals spread the plague, so they were carrying it. But actually, it was rats that spread the plague. How did rats spread the plague? Well, the rats carried tiny little bits of um, bacteria or tiny little fleas on them. And then those um, pieces of bacteria were spread around or the fleas jumped off the rats and started biting people. But fleas are so tiny you can hardly see them. Then when the humans were infected, they started coughing and sneezing. And this caused the plague to spread really quickly. There was lots of rats in the towns and cities, especially in London, because it was so dirty at the time. Because the streets were so narrow, like we learned about last week, and there wasn't very much um, storage, so there wasn't many drains for um, toilet waste to go down. There wasn't any bins for the rubbish to be collected, so this attracted lots of rats. So this meant that the plague spread more quickly because there was more rats. And then once the humans had got it, it could be passed on by coughing and sneezing. A bit like coronavirus now can be passed on with humans coughing and sneezing. So what happened in the plague? Well, people were terrified of the plague because there was no cure and lots of towns and communities were completely wiped out by the plague. So lots of people died because of the plague and it spread so quickly that people died just a few days after being infected. And if they caught the plague, then they got lots of pains in their bodies and they might get a hot temperature and their body might swell. And there was no cure at the time. So now with coronavirus, we're going to be getting a vaccine to help us. And we've also got lots of equipment in the hospitals to help us if anybody does catch coronavirus. So we can have um, oxygen and things like that. However, in the past, during the plague, there wasn't all this fancy equipment or vaccines to help people. So unfortunately, during the plague, lots of people died. However, it's also very sad that in our coronavirus, lots of people have died too. The plague was horrible and it could wipe out towns and cities within weeks. So as soon as one person in the town got it, it spread very, very quickly. So this meant that people had to stay in their household. So if they got infected, they'd have to stay in their own home. 
so they weren't allowed out. A bit like us right now, we're having to social distance and self-isolate. However, in the past with the plague, people used to put red X's on their door. So if, if people had got the plague in their house, they'd place a red X on the door so that nobody else would come and the words, Lord have mercy on us. So it meant that hopefully they believed that God would save them from the plague. So it'd be a bit like us now, if somebody had um, COVID in, in a house or coronavirus, then they'd put a big red X on the door. And lots and lots of people died in London. 100,000 people died in London by the end of 1665. And unfortunately, 100,000 people have now died of coronavirus in England, which is also terrible. So what happened during the plague? Who helped during the plague? Well, King Charles II, who was in charge, he decided to flee London, which means he left London. And anybody who had lots of money decided to leave London as well. But this meant that the poor people couldn't get out of London. They didn't have enough money to get out. And that meant that they had to stay and suffer the effects of the plague. So they had to stay round and unfortunately it meant lots of the poor people died. How do we know about the plague? Well, Samuel Pepys told us about the plague because he stayed in London and wrote his diary every day, which teaches us lots of information about the plague, just like he wrote about the Great Fire of London. We know lots about Samuel Pepys and his lovely diaries that gave us lots of historical records. So how did people try and keep away from the plague? They knew there was no cure, but they tried other ways to not be infected. Some people that thought if you hold some flowers or some herbs under their nose, then they wouldn't get the plague. Some people drank fine wines and even ate a toad to stop them getting the plague. And other people but thought having a bath in milk would stop them getting the plague. Maybe they should wear a mask like we do. The rhyme, Ring Ring Roses, comes from the Great Plague because people believed that the Ring Ring Roses, the red spots that people got full, the red spots that people got were the people that were infected by the plague and the pocket full of poses was the small bunch of flowers that people used to hold under their nose. And then the song, A Tissue, A Tissue, refers to people sneezing if they'd caught the plague and then we all fall down is sadly if somebody dies. So maybe you or you, and your grown up or you and your family could have a go at singing the song. Ring a ring a roses, a pocket full of poses, a tissue, a tissue, we all fall down. And that song originated from the plague. So how did the plague end? How did we stop the plague? Well, the Great Plague carried on till autumn 6066, and then a very cold period of weather keep, killed off lots of fleas and bacteria. So because it was such a cold winter, it managed to freeze and kill lots of the bacteria and the plague spreading. So it stopped the plague, the plague spreading because it killed the fleas and the bacteria. But also in 1666, something happened. We know what happened in 1666. It was the Great Fire of London. And because the Great Fire destroyed so many buildings and killed and burnt so many rats, this actually stopped the spread of the plague. So even though the fire was a bad thing to happen, it was positive because it stopped the end of the plague. It really helped stop the spread of the disease. Thank you for listening to my PowerPoint all about the plague. And we've now found out that the Great Fire of London helped stop the spread of the plague, which is excellent. We're going to make a mind map of information all about the plague. So in the middle of our mind map, we're going to have the plague. You can rewind my video to look through the PowerPoint, but as well as this, you could research online and see if you can find out some more facts about the plague. So I'm going to put first that the plague was from 1644 to 1666. That's how long it lasted. And the plague is a disease 
that spread across Europe and the plague had been in England for a very long time but the worst time was 1665 when the plague badly affected London. So 1665 in London. Now how did the plague spread? Remember it was the rats that spread the plague. Rats spread the plague. And who can remember why the rats spread the plague? What did they have on them that spread the plague? That's right, it was bacteria and fleas. Bacteria and fleas. And remember, fleas are tiny little creatures that can jump between people. And then if the humans got it, then also coughing and sneezing would spread the plague as well. And unfortunately, lots of people died because there was no cure for the plague. No cure for the plague, which is very sad. And sometimes if people had the plague in their household, they would place a red, what can you remember, a red X on their door so that everybody knew that they'd got the plague and hopefully they thought that God might help them. And by the end of 1665, over 100,000 people had died in London. It was terribly sad. And King Charles, who was in charge of um, England at that time, he escaped and left. He fled London and that, lots of rich people did that, which meant many poor people were left to, well, not to survive. Many poor people were left and unfortunately they died. So I'm going to put over here King Charles II left. And then down here I'm going to put poor people had to stay. And how do we know about the plague? Because Samuel Pepys wrote about the plague in his diary. And the plague was ended by a very cold winter. So the end for a cold winter that froze all of the disease and the infection and also the great fire of London helped stop, stop the end of the plague because it burnt all of the diseases. And some people had very funny methods of stopping the plague. So I'm gonna put stopping here and make some notes. So people put flowers under their nose and that's where the song ring a ring a roses, a pocket full of poses, a just shoot, a just shoot, we all fall down. So flowers under their nose. Um, people might have eaten a frog or a toad. So ate a toad, which I think sounds like a very bonkers way to stop a disease. Or they'd have a bath in some milk which also sounds a little bit bonkers. I think they might be better to wear a mask like we do at the moment. So boys and girls, I'd like you to rewind the video and watch the PowerPoint to help you make your own mind map of information all about the Great Plague. You can also research online and see if you can find any more out about the Great Plague. We can't wait to see your mind maps and find out all the information you get about the Great Plague. You might even find some interesting facts that you can share with us and tell us some more key information. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.